Hi there, come on in. You know this is ice fishing season. Despite the fact that it's been so warm, we're gonna take you ice fishing. In fact, spear fishing for northern pike. An exciting way to go after pike. Wait until they come into the hole under the shanty. Uh, it's like hunting. It really got me cranked and I think you're gonna enjoy this too. We're also going to go hunting for white-tailed deer with a decoy. That's right, you've heard it used on ducks and geese and turkeys. We're trying it for white-tailed deer. The results are astounding. They're gonna knock you out, so you stay tuned. I'm Fred Trost, it's Thursday night, time for Michigan Outdoors. I got him, I got him. Don't I? Ducks respond to calls, but what really brings them in is a spread of decoys. Even crude simulations of ducks floating on the water do attract wild ducks that don't seem to know the difference. The same principle works for goose decoys set out on dry land. Turkey decoys and turkey calls bring in gobblers. But what about deer? They look smarter than birds, but did you ever wonder about decoying a buck? Well, we'll never know if we don't try it. Hey, there are loads of tracks in here. Just loaded with tracks. We're gonna set up this decoy. Oh, maybe 75 yards from our blind. Gotta put the ear on here. Ears are the important thing, according to Bob McGuire. Indicates a doe that's Hmm, maybe I'll, I'll face it like this. Because I expect the deer to be coming from that way. Let's see. No, I'll tell you what. I'm going to face it this direction because they're likely to think that this doe is looking that way and it'll take their eyes off of us. It's late afternoon on the opening day of deer season, 1990. We had seen very few deer, so at 3 p.m. we moved to a field that always had deer come in in the evening. Not many bucks, but lots of does, and we wanted to see how they'd react to a decoy. Cameraman John Ford and I watched from the base of a spruce tree. But this is a beautiful set. Oh, you know what? I almost thought we had a deer out there, but it's our decoy. <laughs> The nice thing about this is I can rest the rifle on, on the branch up against the side. Um, we're really concealed in here. So we'll just wait and see if the decoy works. The wind is blowing this direction, so it's going to take our scent away from the deer. Well, once again, John, we're in the, quote, catbird seat. <laughs> Maybe this one will work. My son, Zach, was on the same side of the field, 100 yards to our right, closer to where the deer usually come out. Now, he saw a buck that we couldn't see. Zach missed the buck, but the three does at the end of the field didn't run, evidently because the decoy didn't run. Interesting reaction. It's the next afternoon. We came back to that field, setting our blind on the south side rather than the north. Now to mask my scent from handling the decoy and maybe even attract the deer, I put a quart of urine over the plastic dough. Now human urine is the freshest, easiest to obtain deer scent you can get. Now keep in mind that most deer will be coming from the swamp to the west. That's on the upwind side. The wind's blowing from that direction, so any deer that's on that end of the field won't be able to smell the decoy or smell us. But their eyes don't have the same limitations as their noses. Their eyes work in all directions. That's why the idea of a decoy is so attractive. To smell this decoy, a deer would have to be directly behind it because that's the direction of the wind on this afternoon. Now in about a half hour, the first doe appeared at the west end of the field. From the moment it laid eyes on the decoy, it was intent, but somewhat alarmed. It even faked like it was relaxed, only to snap its head up trying to catch the decoy, making a false move. For the first time, it checks downwind towards us with its ears. Remember, there's no way it can smell anything from our direction, 
So its attention goes back to the decoy, a deer it doesn't recognize, a deer that doesn't move. It's still quite a distance from the decoy, but this proves that a deer can pick out another deer when it's totally motionless. So they can recognize motionless objects. Now this might be a signal, but this doe is urinating. It's really wild. Yeah, it looks like it, it looks like it wants some reaction from the decoy. I mean, that could be a little buck, but it's probably a small doe. She's really disconcerted that that decoy doesn't respond. This little doe tried her best to get the decoy to move, finally bounding off in the classic alarm response. But she didn't leave the field. She was just taunting the decoy. Look at that leaping. I bet, I bet it stops right down there. Yeah, it was going to stop right there. Turn around and look back. Isn't that something? <laughs> that is amazing. Well, one thing that decoy does, it takes that deer's attention off of us. But I wouldn't call this a real positive response. Well, it wasn't a friendly response, but it was a definite response for sure. While the first doe was feeding, a second doe came out, this time from the north side of the field, closer to the decoy, and it worked itself downwind from the decoy where it could catch its scent. Oh, this is neat. An hour ago, I had doused this decoy with a quart of my own urine, and I guess I passed the test. This deer definitely wasn't alarmed by the scent. In fact, it probably helped. I think we have the two smallest deer in the county out here. The second doe was unsettled by this motionless decoy. The first doe didn't care anymore and was feeding about 50 yards away. But the second doe, though, was totally absorbed in that decoy. Something wasn't right about this frozen deer. <laughs> oh, this is hysterical. Now it seems to be more concerned about where the decoy is looking, or appears to be looking. I mean, it's just a decoy. It's a hunk of plastic. But the real deer knows where the fake deer is supposed to be looking. Look at that. <laughs> oh, too much. There's no doubt that the decoy attracted other deer and kept their attention away from us. Well, that walked all around that decoy where the weed had been touching. Downwind, upwind, it didn't seem to matter. You know, that, that little fawn there is more interested in the decoy than it is in the other deer. Yeah, it probably knows that other deer. Those fawns keep looking back at the decoy and where the decoy is looking. It's going back again, but it walked all around it, it walked downwind from it, apparently didn't smell where we had touched. It, it just fixated on that decoy. I'd like to see what a buck does. Well, next fall, during bow season, we'll find out if decoys work on bucks like they do on ducks. Place your bets. I think it's going to work. Come in. <laughs> this is the plastic decoy. Yes, they work. It should not be a buck. Decoy should be a doe. A tail doesn't seem to make any difference. We've learned a lot about decoys. We'll tell you about in the future. And one of these days, we're bound to get a big buck that comes into a decoy for our trophy book. An unusually large buck rack, 11 points with a 22 and 3 quarter inch spread. Craig Blank from Allegan took it with his bow a week before gun season in Allegan County. A few counties over in Lenaway, Mel Hoffman from Hudson bagged this buck with a bow, also 11 points. It had a 23 and an eighth inch spread. 15-year-old Bob Velo from Traverse City got his first 10-pointer somewhere near home, also hunting Grand Traverse County, which does have big bucks. Here's a 10-point with a 22 and a half inch spread taken by Carl Robel from Allen Park. Jackson County always produces monsters. Jack Sturgill from Jackson got this 12-pointer with a 21 and 5 8 inch spread on the second day of gun season. Now in our fishing awards division, 13-year-old Matt Shaw from Attica qualified with his 14-inch crappie ice fishing duck pond in Lapeer County. 
Now here's a 15 incher taken by Mike Payne from Columbiaville. He says he doesn't know the name of the lake he was ice fishing. Sure, Mike, I understand. Veteran angler Ben Knoll from Portage took this 25 inch, six and a half pound long nose sucker when he was steelhead fishing the St. Joe in December. Can you tell that Herman Metema from Granville caught his 34 inch steelhead from the Big Manistee on a day that was three degrees, 28 below wind chill? <laughs> That's dedication. And Ron Risso from Midland was fishing Lake Mitchell. On a much milder day, he took a trophy-sized black bullhead, 14 inches long, and for the benefit of his fishing buddy, here's Ron's story. I've been a bullhead fan for several years. Uh, I was stationed out in South Dakota, and they take their bullheads very seriously out there. Uh, you know, there's, there's more to a bullhead than just a pretty face. You know, they're, they're, uh, they're good-eating fish. But my fishing buddy just doesn't uh, share my enthusiasm for uh, bullhead fishing. And uh, we were fishing uh, for crappies because there's no way I'd get them to go for bullheads. And uh, the old bobber goes down, and I knew right away it wasn't a crappie. I figured it was a northern that grabbed it, and certainly the uh, four-pound test was going to disappear. And I'd put another hook on. But it turned out I saw the fish when I got it up by the boat. I could, I could tell it was a, a fair size uh, bullhead, so I, I didn't want to lose him because I know how much my buddy loves these things. So I said, Russ, get the net. So uh, he netted it, and it's a good thing he did because I literally got it just by a whisker. And uh, he, was, he was slightly less than thrilled when I got the uh, master angler patch. So uh, <laughs> when I got the invitation to come here, I really wanted him to come, so I said, Russ, you know, I got the invitation to, to go to this, and uh, he just shook his head. He says, uh, I suppose you'll be on TV, too. Russ, this bullhead's for you. <laughs> Your buddy Ron Risso is our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Angler of the Week. We do have a number of ice fishing festivals and tournaments coming up on our outdoor calendar. That one at Lakes Cadillac in Mitchell in two weeks is going to be really interesting. We're going to be up there. They don't have a division for spearing. Pike spearing is something that an elite number of sportsmen enjoy doing. It's exciting. It has the elements of hunting. We speared pike a couple years ago with Mike Copenhaver in an episode that, uh, well, it's a Michigan Outdoors classic. Six or eight inches long, painted different colors, but balanced with metal or wooden fins so they turn in a circle under the shanty. These fish decoys represent a lot of time and a lot of enjoyment to Mike. Made with his own hands, they're more fun to use. Now here's one of his favorites. He says this one attracts a lot of pike, so I clip it to the line that's looped through an eye hook in the ceiling. The decoy hangs by this line, and to make it move, you yank the cord in small jerks. That's not difficult, and it gives you something to do while you're waiting for a pike. As we look down into the hole after shutting the door, we can see the bottom, and OJ and I begin to see some small fish. Check one right under you. Now there's a bluegill right straight down here, but it's small. You see it right down there? It's right. Yeah, yeah I see it. I think that's yeah. a gill. Yeah, yeah, that's... Oh, God, there's perch moving off to the under the sides of the holes. You know what we need is a setup of mirrors. <laughs> Somebody's got to come with a, those big round mirrors they have in the stores, you know, check for shoplifters. We'll put a couple of those down here. Yeah, unless you get your face down to the water, you can't see under the edges of the hole in the ice. It's a little frustrating. That's probably see, plenty. Yeah, well, we may just picked up the perch. Yeah. You can see how well that perch is camouflaged with the bottom. Just moving slow. With body temperatures in the 30s, these fish are slow. I'd like to see him dart out of here, because that'd mean a pike is coming. It wasn't long after the perch swam off that a northern pike came into the decoy, the first pike I had seen while spearing. I got him, I got him. Don't I? I missed. Holy cow. Well, trust you, bungled that one, got pike fever, and made a lousy throw. Later, I tried a wiggle wart lure, that white spot on your right, and I got another chance. Well, you see it? Yeah. Okay, I got the spear. But this pike didn't seem to like the decoy. I hope he comes back. Come on, come back, Mama. Come on. 
seems swimming off. Doggone it. I wonder if I missed my chance. Oh, my heart's thumping again. It's amazing how excited you can get. And a minute later, that pike came back. This one this time. You see him now? Yeah, he should come in slow, I hope. Can you see him now? Yeah, I can see him. Well, the camera could see him, but he was at an angle, and all I could see was his nose. Don't gotta move in there, guy. In the winter, fish move so slowly it drives you crazy. Doesn't look like he's hungry, does he? No, just curious. Can you see the spear? Yeah. I can't tell you how my heart is thumping. Dog got it, get in here. I wonder if I should take a poke at him. Dog got it all. I wonder if he'll be back. I wonder if I should have taken a poke at him there. No, no, I did the right thing. I didn't have a clear shot. Always better to pass it up. Later, the light was out. You can hear me throw the spear, and the action began. This is way to the left. I had to get him. Flip it on, flip it on. I got him. Okay. Ooh, he's pulling a little bit here, too. He's, a, he's a, not a bad one. Let me get the door open so I can... Okay. Ah. You ready? Yep. Oh. He, he's not he's not bad lucky he's going take, taking the spear clear down it here big, it was a big one i can see it oh i tell you thump 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 my heart okay yeah he's he's fighting he's fighting oh i got him speared good through the back here he comes oh whoops i just about snapped a decoy off here and there he is at long last, my first pike with a spear. To retain its flavor and freshness, we bury it in the snow alongside the shanty. Fillet out the bones, it's going to make a great recipe. The next time you see spearing shanties dotting a lake, you'll understand the quiet dramas that take place inside, in the dark, in Michigan outdoors. <laughs>
Yeah. I'll eat any of this stuff separately and in great quantities. <laughs> but putting it all together, you know what really makes me really mad about it? Is I like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah. it's, that is doggone irritating. I like it. Well, you did do a lot of beefing uh, just before people saw you come on camera here. This man was complaining. <laughs> Big time. <laughs> Big time. I, this is the worst combination of stuff I ever saw in my life. <laughs> but you know, you know, it, it's not only dessert. You could eat this really as a meal too. It's pretty, it's pretty I can't good. decide where it goes in the meal, but I, I'm driven to keep eating because it's interesting. Yeah. Hey, maybe. He called maybe, it a wild game dessert. Well, maybe, mm -hmm. maybe what we do is found out a whole new category of food here. This mm -hmm. is called before the meal and after the meal, <laughs> right? And during the meal. I just don't know. It, this is, this is weird. Mm -hmm. But it's, but it's tasty. Very good. It's Very delicious. Rabbit is delicious. It is. You've got to admit, we have some of the darndest fish and wild game recipes on this show, but they're all good and you can change them with domestic meat or like this one, make it as a dessert with no meat at all. I don't know what to tell you this weekend. If the weather is warm, it's comfortable to be out there. The fishing is, is nothing terrific, but it's got to get better. So get outdoors if you can. It's a great place to be. See you next week. Next week on Michigan Outdoors, it's time for a DNR update. I'll show you the agenda for the Natural Resources Commission's February meeting. We'll look at license fees, DNR budgets, and talk to a conservation officer about the work they do. We'll go fishing, too, for steelhead trout and grayling. Oh, we have Bob Garner choking on an experimental recipe and more. So join me next week right here on Public TV. Look at that leaping, I bet, I bet it stops right down there. <laughs>